Hey folks, uh, thanks for joining me. Again, we're back on the little Peter Pan radio from the early to mid-1930s. It's time now to do the RF alignment, and the RF alignment is uh, very, very simple and straightforward. There's not much to it. We've got the uh, two trimmer capacitors that we can adjust on the, uh, again, the variable condenser, and that's about it. So um, let's get started. And anyway, you'll probably see what I made a little mock-up here of my dial. Uh, just to see how things track and again um, I'll show you guys how I made this. I've done this many many times uh, for uh, radios. I didn't want to you know, bring back and forth from the cabinet uh, back to uh, the chassis itself. So a little cardboard stock there with a uh, scaled uh, scan copy of the dial scale. So um, anyway it's just a little work around you guys may want to try it sometime, especially on the All-American 5s as well. So if you look at a lot of documentation on how to align these, um, a lot of folks just say go to 1400, do the alignment there, peak it. Uh, what I want to do is see how close the dial tracks, and I want to generate a signal, which I'm already doing on my RF signal generator. And um, I'll show just a bit of that in the picture-in-picture -picture as well. At um, 1.7 uh, megahertz or uh, 1700 kilocycles. So uh, I'm going to tune the dial down here to uh, 1700 and again it may look a little different on on camera just because of the angle but um, that's as close as I can get it. And uh, what I noticed the uh, tuning uh, range spec for this radio is 550 uh, to 1700 and when I adjust the knob here with the uh, dial in place and all that, I go just below 550 and I'd go just above 1700. So we'll start there again. I've got a, a modulated tone on my uh, signal uh, generator. Again, we're competing with the uh, air conditioning running in the background, so hopefully you guys will be able to hear the uh, tone. And you can look here in the picture-in-picture uh, -picture that I'm sharing as well, and you'll see my oscilloscope and I'm just coming off of the uh, output uh, transformer uh, the leads actually going to the uh, voice coil itself so let me uh, crank this up and I'm not connected to the uh, receiver itself I'm using a long wire antenna and I've just got a lead off of my RF signal generator uh, just laying in close proximity to the uh, antenna lead itself. Let me adjust the auto scale here. All right, most directions, and I'll try to show this again. Sorry, I don't have a third camera, but uh, they say to start with the uh, trimmer associated with the uh, detector. So that would be this back uh, trimmer. And again, I'm trying to use a, a wooden adjustment tool that you can uh, just make there, file it down, and get it in there. Okay, now you can see it starting to come around, and you can see the amplitude of the uh, signal increase as well. Now again, the volume control is probably out of view on the camera, the way I'm showing it is to the left, and it's again, it's tied into the RF section of the radio, so I'm going to be turning it down. Instead of reaching for the... Uh, signal generator itself. I can do the attenuation right on the volume control. Alright, let me go back now to the uh, what I think is the uh, detector side itself, the uh, trimmer. These things are very very simple so again I'm just uh, moving this thing around. You can see me there moving it. But 
and that big jump was me on the volume control. Sorry about that. Alright, right there it seems to be peaked and uh, what I'm doing, this would be on the RF side itself. I've got the uh, trimmer almost all the way backed out and it seems to be where I have the most uh, gain here at uh, 1700 uh, kilocycles. Let me uh, crank the volume up here again and then adjust this other trimmer here just a bit. turn the gain down some and uh, see if I can see the uh, change about right in there appears to be the uh, kind of the sweet spot okay I don't think I'm going to do any better than that Okay, that's how simple it is. Again, I've just got the two trimmers there, so I'm at 1700. Let me rock this thing kind of back and forth here. And you can see the dial still at 1700. Now in my market, I've got a uh, station that broadcast at uh, 600 kilocycles so uh, let's run down here and just see how close this thing is tracking now You guys may not be able to see it, but there's uh, 600 on the dial, represented as 60, and it's uh, spot on. So, uh, pretty amazing, really. I'm kind of surprised. Anyway, you can see, uh, well, you probably can't because I'm using a side uh, angle view here for the camera, but uh, I've still got three holes in the uh, speaker to fix, so the audio quality is still not going to be that great. A little bit uh, stricter and a little bit better, but that's something critics always point to. But uh, the ESPN executives. And I'm going to check with my dad on the uh, volume control or potentiometer to see if he's got an old 10K by chance. And if not, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, this thing seems to be playing pretty well with the uh, 7K unit in there. I'd love to have a 10K just to play around. But. Um, Anyway, thought you guys would find this interesting. Again, uh, how to do the alignment. Uh, very, very simple, straightforward, but uh, more importantly, maybe how to cheat, create your a dial plate or scale that you can use a, a little mock-up like this when you're doing your alignments on your All-American 5 sets as well. So, uh, folks, thanks again for uh, joining for um, the alignment here on the little uh, Peter Pan from the early to mid-1930s.